Hi, my name is Paul Maddox. I'm here to show you the new version of the GORF Mini MIDI Step Sequencer. A uh, little bit of a tongue twister to start off with there. The main difference between this version of hardware and the previous version of hardware is we have a 2.5mm power socket here that takes your standard uh, sort of DC wall wart AC power adapter, whatever you care to call them. Uh, it will run from anything from 6 to about 12 volts. Uh, I recommend running with 9 volts in here. Um, they're fairly common power supplies, so nothing too radical here. A few of the parts have moved around, but the buttons and the knobs and the little displays are all in exactly the same place. You've got your MIDI in connector here, MIDI out connector here. That all remains the same, so no major changes there. So, the major changes are actually in the software in the little chippy here. So there's been quite a few changes and I'd like to thank Peter Vitek for helping me with those changes. Uh, he's added a couple of really neat features uh, and sort of inspired me to pick the, the gauntlet up and add a few extras of my own that I'd been thinking about for a while. So, let's show you some of the new features. The first one of these is how you change mode. With the previous versions you had to bash this little button a dozen times to get to, say, I don't know, the control mode or... And then if you wanted to go back to CC2 you had to press it like another four times. That's gone now. And in line with the way I've done with the Tron, um, you hold down the button and you press the button. So if I want to go to the velocity, I'll press that button. If I want to go to the gate length there, CC1, CC2 and so on. So all the, exactly the same as before on Tron. Uh, the same modes are there, so you've got note mode, push the buttons, velocity mode, length mode, CC1, CC2. Now the control mode has moved to this button here, number 7. This gives you the control mode where you can control the rate and a few other bits and pieces. So let's put that step back on. Right. So the first of these new modes, this is control mode 2, which you access by pressing this button and this button together, you get um, a few extra features in here. So if I start off a little sequence, there you go, Let me turn it down a bit, it's a smidge on the loud side. There we go, right. So the first one of these features is this pot here, which is a first step pot. A few people asked for this, there you go. So I can start at step 4, step 5, 6, 4, 7, 8 all the way back down to one again. Now, the next pot, you guessed it, no end step or sequence end. So I can have this on one. Do all these things. There you go. You can use the two in conjunction with each other. So if I make this one, let's, hang on, let's leave it at two to make it change. There you go, two notes. I can change that to that. And you can see that because the step end is the second note, I'm only getting one note sounded. So I have to move that up to four. There you go. Move that down to there. This means you can set this to one, and you can do this. I can pick step six to play, or I can go back to step four, or I can go to step three, two. So those two new buttons. The more astute of you will remember that this function was on the previous menu page. Um, that's now been replaced with something else. I'll show you that in a moment. So other new features on here. We got four. We got all these buttons that now do really cool things. So if I start the sequence running, I'll show you first. So this one rotates the sequence left. So if I press the sequence, you can hear how it starts. So if I press it left a couple of times. And it's rotated the sequence that was here round this way. Anything that drops off this end comes back on here. And I can r rotate the sequence right as well. Back to where it was. Incidentally, the note it shows when you change it is the note that's the first note that's played. So, other things. We've now got transpose up and transpose down. Keep things nice and simple for you to use and 
It saves you jumping in and out modes and twiddling with knobs and not getting precisely a step up or a step down. Right. So now we go back to the old control mode. There are, those two buttons there. A few things have moved around, not a lot, but there's a couple of new features. So let's go through them. Originally this knob here selected your internal or external MIDI clock. This has now been replaced by a button. So when you push that it says external clock, and when you push it again it says internal clock. Again, so fairly easy. So external clock is MIDI, not a lot's going to happen. Internal clock is the internal clock. This is the speed control, uh, and it's now in sort of almost beats per minute kind of. So the next mode we've got was the same as before, I think if I remember rightly. Yep, this sets the range on the knobs. So when you're adjusting the pot, this gives you 13 notes, 18 notes, 25, 31, 42, and all the way up to 127, which you're never going to be able to get. But hey, it's there if you want it. I tend to keep mine on 25, which is just over two octaves, kind of a handy sort of range. Next one we've got, same again, is the root note as before. Uh, this is quite a coarse control, so you can go all the way from there, right the way down to there. Uh, it's an enormous range, and again, the, the advantage of the uh, other mode where you can go up and down a semitone makes it a little more controllable, especially if you're doing this live. So knob 4, yeah, that's the sequence length, that's the same as the other mode, so I can shorten that. So, I mean, it's the same as before, it's in the other place. If you're familiar with having your sequence length there, it's still there in the same place. This one, uh, this is your MIDI channel, same as before. Again, nothing's changed here. These two, your CC1 and your CC2s, exactly the same. You've got full range of controllers there you can play with and tinker with to your heart's content. This button now does something new. A lot of people ask for the ability to send um, or to save their patches via MIDI. So you can now, using the buttons, do a MIDI SysX dump. This knob now selects the ID of the unit. So you can have up to 16 GORFs from ID 0 to 15. So the idea being that if you have a, a GORF 0 here, and a, a GORF 1 and a GORF 2 running, if you do a SysX dump, the other two won't receive it, they'll ignore it. But if you set one to ID 0, and this is on ID 0 and you send it, it will get that patch. So I'll show you what I mean. This button button 5, if I remember rightly, sends the current uh, pattern sequence, whatever you want to call it, as a MIDI SysX dump. So you press it, it sends it, it's done. This next button sends the current bank, so everything that's in that bank. The next one, I'm not going to do it for various reasons, sends the entire uh, contents of the memory, so that's 64 sequences. The reason I'm not going to do that is because if I hit that, it will do a run through the memory, it'll find some bad data because I've just put this chip to board together and put a new chip in it uh, and it'll say bad data and it'll take forever to do a patch dump. But it's handy if you want to do a complete backup of your whole like, golf sequencer. 